Today is Monday, September 18th, and it's a little after 12 p.m. Uh, this is a trade review of a position I'm currently holding involving the Spider S&P 500 ETF, commonly known under its ticker of SPY. And as of the time of this recording, the ETF is quoted at $444.50. And since the market started trading this morning, the ETF is up $1.14. Uh, so this is the uh, 6,000 tick chart of the ETF. So each candlestick represents 6,000 trades. This is the current candlestick right here. And in the bottom right quadrant, there's a little meter. It's tallied up a little over 5,000 trades so far. However, heading into this morning's uh, opening bell, um, the S&P was ranging inside this gray box. And then when the market started trading, it took a spike to the downside. So this uh, is where I thought the market was going to continue moving lower. So I subsequently uh, took a short position via option contracts, specifically uh, contracts that expires this Thursday, September 21st, with a strike price of 439. So when I entered this position, the ETF was quoted at $442. So essentially what this contract is saying is that on or before the close of this Friday, I'm anticipating the ETF will be at or below $439. And unfortunately, since I entered this position, uh, the ETF uh, broke to the upside, totally fake out. It's a complete fake out. However, uh, I did overlay a, uh, a channel. So it appears that the current market structure is inside this ascending trend to the upside. However, it appears that price now is possibly on its way of rolling over, breaking below this lower yellow support level. Uh, so with three days remaining, I'm, into, I'm still bearish on the market for a potential break to the downside. So that's the general thesis for this position. Uh, so with all that said, switching over to the trade tab, the uh, right down here um, is my position involving the 439 strike. Uh, I only picked up four contracts. And because now that the trend is to the upside, I, I didn't want to get too carried away. Uh, so all four contracts will be expiring in three days. And I've averaged down my cost basis to $81.50 per contract. And unfortunately, as shown uh, in the chart, the trade is going against me as the premium is now quoted at $56.50. Uh, and right now, the overall PL is reflecting a loss of $100 since entering this position. And if I click on the trade confirm here, the first uh, contract I picked up was at $98. And then as the trade was going against me, I started scaling in and increasing my position. So I went from $98 to $87 to $85 and $56. So that's what the uh, uh, premium is now valued at $81.50. And this is current or the respective uh, P&L for each of those uh, respective uh, option contracts. So um, it's still early in the trade. Now it's down $96. So again, I'll be uh, reviewing this on the futures chart uh, when the stock market closes today uh, I will continue tracking the S&P 500 on the uh, futures market which will start trading uh, tonight at 6 p.m. so um, for the purpose of time I'll go ahead and pause it here I'll do another update possibly heading into tomorrow morning's opening bell if not then I might do another update at the uh, uh, later tonight, heading into the overnight session for the uh, futures market. So uh, until that update, more to follow. So the stock market's been closed for a few hours now. It's currently 7.44 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, so the break to the downside did occur, as I was anticipating. Uh, however, it didn't start the chain reaction to the downside, although this could be the start of it. Um, so, so far, what is appearing uh, to me is that now there appears to be this uh, 
channel to the downside. So here we have resistance and we have support uh, in, in a uh, descending channel. And as well, we have uh, appears to be a stair step down. So we have a high and then we have a lower high and then the next would be a lower high and then so on. So if this trend does continue, uh, heading into tomorrow morning's open, because right now the ETF uh, suspended trading at four, four o'clock, but the futures market right now is slightly going sideways with a, a minor edge to the downside. So that could affect or spill over into the ETF heading into tomorrow morning's afternoon session. So I am projecting another move to the downside sometime in the afternoon, maybe uh, 1 p.m. ish. Um, as well, in addition to the stair step down and this descending channel, uh, it appears that this area down here, there is a reasonable support level. And uh, what I'm referring to is this purple line right here, which is around 443.20. So if, pro if or when price does come down to retest this, uh, it might have a difficult time breaking below it or the break to the downside could be so significant that we could see another major move to the downside, similar to what happened here. Um, but time will tell. And if I switch over to the trade tab, the uh, position is now down $88. So it's essentially going sideways at this point. But the loss is still evident here. I am considering adding another contract, although... I, I might just leave it at four. We'll see how the market opens tomorrow morning. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll continue tracking the S&P 500 via the futures market, which is which started trading at 6 p.m. this evening. So uh, I'll do another update in the morning. Today's Thursday, September 21st, and it's uh, 9.06 a.m. Eastern Time. The stock market will be opening in about 23 minutes, so I thought I'd do a quick status check on the SPY trade. Uh, so there was a lot of volatility in the markets yesterday, and uh, the ETF ended the session at $438.64. So again, my strike price, my option trade involved a $439 uh, uh, price. Now that uh, the ETF is a dollar below my entry price or my strike price, this is now a profitable trade. So switching over to the trade tab, a couple of things. The PNL is now reflecting a positive balance of $564. The premium is now valued at $161.50 per option contract. Uh, I was able to reduce my cost basis to $66.83 as I added two additional contracts yesterday morning before the volatility kicked in in the afternoon. Um, so right now I am holding six contracts and all six are designated ITM, which is in the money. Uh, so if I click on the trade con from here. So yesterday morning uh, when there was a lot of sideways action, uh, I added two additional contracts, uh, both under uh, $40 per contract. So that's how I was able to uh, reduce my cost basis from $81.50 to its current $66.83. So uh, I was tracking the uh, S&P 500 futures, and during the overnight session last night going into today, uh, it, the S&P 500 the, the pullback continued during the overnight session. It dropped another maybe seven or eight handles. So there is a likelihood that we could see a gap down in the markets today, uh, which would bode well for my position as I want the price to continue, to continue dropping. So that would be a positive gap up in uh, the ETF or the SPY. So... What I'll do is I'll switch over to the uh, chart layout of my option contracts. 
So this is the chart layout of my option contract as shown under the ticker of the SPY. This is involving the September 21st expiration with the 439 strike price. I'm on the put side. So the premium is valued at $1.62 or $162. If I open up Active Trader, this is where a price ended yesterday, uh, causing the uh, positive balance of $567. Now, if I scroll down, my entry price is right here as identified by the two yellow arrowheads. And uh, essentially, this is a zero line for me because this is uh, the loss of $2.40. So my premium is valued down here. Um, if there is a gap up, then it could be that price would be somewhere in the $2 range when the stock market opens. Um, ideally, I'd like to close this position out at the $3 mark or greater. So if I'm able to close it out at $3, then that's a profit potential of a little over uh, almost $1,400. Uh, so that's like another $900 move to the upside if there's a strong gap up and the market continues dropping uh, throughout the course of today. So. These contracts expires today at 4 o'clock, actually 4.15, I believe. Um, but I really don't want to hold these contracts that far into the market. Uh, I'd like to close it out ideally at my $3 uh, target price. I don't care if it runs up to $5. Uh, I just want to guarantee that this is a profitable trade at that point. So what I'll do is I'll pause it here and I'll pick it up when the stock market opens uh, well, a few seconds before the stock market bell opens, and we'll see how significant this gap up will be. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so the stock market will be signing off in five seconds. So 351, that's nice. I'd like to close it out. Three fifty. There, I close that at three fifty. Okay. So I'm looking at the chart right now. It looks like there could be a possibility for a move to the upside today, but I I don't think I'm it's convincing enough. Uh, I would like to short the market again possibly uh, later today if not maybe sunday evening when the futures market starts trading uh for next week so uh, yeah so i was able to sell out of the position at 350 so to do this real quickly i sold it at 350 multiplies 100 for each option so it's 350 I picked up six so that was a $2,100 uh, position so um, minus the $400 I believe this was out of pocket so this is a net gain of uh, $1,700 um, so the market is looking very weak uh, I think we're in the bear market but um, we'll see how this goes um, yeah, so this was a good setup. Uh, it took a while. I mean, literally, I jumped into this position Monday. It's uh, three days later, and uh, it worked out well. So until the next setup, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show a chart of the details, the gross uh, profit as well as the net profit. And uh, yeah, so until the next setup, more to follow.